Namaste and welcome everyone here to the 2020 Mahadasha Summit. We're very excited and pleasure to have you here to discuss in depth, comprehensively, everything about what a Dasha period is. Um, we're going to be discussing it from a scientific and a metaphysical perspective. And we're here with two amazing teachers, Sam Sadasi Vajepi and Sunili Jani Palwar. And I think before we get started, I would just like to do a little introduction for them. Um, for Sunili, Jodish is her breath and heritage from her grandpa. She learned and earned Jodish Bhushan, Jodish Pandit title from Jyotir Vidya Pradubini School of Jyotish in Mumbai. She also learned deep wisdom from her uncle Sri Bhagyas Tribeji, and I hope I pronounced that right, and many teachers like Master Sri A.V. Sundaramji, who I'm also friends with, Pantan Guruji. She studies all forms of Jyotish, including Jaimini and Nadi. She's taken webinars of Navamsha and Dashamsha. Uh, she has her Planet to Soul group, uh, um, and she currently practices uh, in her hometown of Mumbai slash India, and she teaches online and offline. She's writing a book on Navamsha Rashaya, which will be published soon. And if you would like to contact Sunili, contact her at planettosoul.com. So such a pleasure to have you here, Sunili. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so very much, Shanati. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to join uh, you. This is the, I think, second or third time I'm associated. We meet first at Sedona. I think Sam was also there at Sedona. But we could not talk much that time. Maybe this year I was about to make it. But because of this uh, pandemic, I'm not very sure whether it will happen or no. But uh, it's very, uh, very, it's a great pleasure joining you all. And uh, thank you. And I am welcoming everyone who is associated with this webinar. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank you, Sunili G. It is also with deep respect I'm able to introduce Sam Sadasi Vajepi, joining us from San Diego, California. Sadasi Vajepi is the founder of the American Academy of Vedic Art and Science, which offers levels one to three certification programs in Vedic astrology. He's also known for many amazing books, including Yoga and Vedic Astrology, and the Ascendance 108 Planets of Vedic Astrology. Uh, he's always doing a thorough and comprehensive analysis of current events and all of significant transits, which are released on his YouTube channel. He has writings and lectures, which are incredibly profound, poignant, and speak directly to the core of the karmic fruit and the karmic situation. Uh, Sada Siva recently released a forecast on transits. Uh, you can um, be reached through his website, VedicArtAndScience.com. Welcome, Brother Sadasiva. Namaste. Oh, Sam, you're muted. I can't hear you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Shana T and Sunili and all of the uh, participants here. I look forward to uh, presenting this. Wonderful, wonderful. This is very exciting. And uh, I'm just going to do a double check to see if Dr. Dharmesh or um, Dr. Pai is here before we get started. Um, but I will invite them in if they join uh, while we're doing the meeting. By the way, I also just wanted to say I'm, I apologize that I won't be able to stay very long. I can present uh, for at, at least one topic, maybe two, we'll see. But I also have to um, leave a little early or you know, rather quickly. So I apologize for that. In the interim, something else came up. Okay, well, let's get started right away. And Sunili G, I have a question for you. Yeah. Sun Sunili, would, yes, you please, I'm there. would you please discuss the, the significance of the Mahadasha versus the Antardasha and the way that they interact with each other? Okay, so thank you, Kshanati. And uh, See, basically, Mahadasha, everyone is very much aware about it. Mahadasha is the starting point of our karmic cycle. 
whenever we are born so that time only our mahadasha gets started and second thing there are different types of mahadashas which are which were followed and which are followed now also but basically vimshottari mahadasha is one of the type which is very usually and very commonly followed the second commonly followed mahadasha is uh, ashtottari mahadasha which is uh, basically depending on the uh, rahu and your ascendant so that's a little complicated dasha but when you go to north side means towards gujarat so there people follow ashtottari mahadasha and they do not follow vimshottari mahadasha people from calcutta they do follow yogini dasha which is of 36 years and some follow by 35 years also where uh, different type of yoginis and they are just getting connected with all uh, you know dasha mahavidya they are very uh, deep follower of all uh, devis and uh, dasha mahavidya also so it is like you know uh, mangala dhanya pingala so all this dasha they follow and the best dasha out of it happens to be siddha mahadasha which is connected to venus but usually we follow vimshottari mahadasha which is very very common and vimshottari mahadasha starts from the moon nakshatra whatever nakshatra you are born with that means whatever nakshatra is of your moon that nakshatra lord mahadasha you are starting say for example as you said that you are aquarius ascendant with rahu nakshatra so definitely you are born with rahu mahadasha so 18 years will not be the mahadasha that is the common following that rahu mahadasha is of 18 years but whenever you are born there is a bhogya and bhukti kal you know so it is when when you were already in your mother's womb maybe that was the uh bhogya kal and when you are born then that is a bhukti kal so remaining years how many years are pending you have to uh, undergo that mahadasha and after that the series start of mahadasha but basically it is said that if you are born in small mahadasha like surya mahadasha or ketu mahadasha basically then we can say mars because ketu mahadasha is 7 years sun mahadasha is 6 years mars mahadasha is 10 years so small mahadasha when you are born we so you are getting big mahadasha when you are growing up so that time you have enough time to make your own growth and mahadasha you know very common word we can say that it is a span of particular years Uh, which is uh, commonly practiced to see the particular events happening in your life events related to your growth related to your each and every house you are definitely supposed to undergo particular planet of mahadasha now and throughout your life so basically vimshottari mahadasha is of 120 years because in ancient times it was believed that person is having at least birth uh, years or we can say long longevity of at least 100 years so that is why it was designed in that form that at least person is able to enjoy the fruits of each mahadasha so that karmic cycle gets over and person gets the moksha that was the basic idea of that but now in this uh, 21st century we are not living till 100 uh, years except few definitely there are uh, people who are uh, living more than 100 years but if we want to know proper event then definitely we have to conjoin mahadasha antardasha antardasha is the immediate planet coming uh, after that mahadasha planet that is your antardasha that means i will just give you an example if you are running uh mercury mahadasha so first mahadasha will be of mercury mercury mahadasha so basically mercury mahadasha is of 17 years so after mercury there comes ketu so after budh mahadasha the ketu mahadasha will start but antardasha if you will talk about so budh budh dasha and then budh ketu dasha will start then budh venus dasha will start then both surya dasha will start then both moon dasha will start then both mars dasha will start then both rahu 
right? Then both Jupiter, then both Saturn, and then your Dasha is getting over. And all these 17 years of Mercury Mahadasha is divided into particular years. That particular years will be granted for this particular Mahadasha and Antardasha. And wherever your that uh, Mahadasha planet is posited, you just have to assess that Mahadasha Lord and its Nakshatra definitely. That what type of fruit this planet is going to give us. And no doubt, as per your house placement, as per the signification of that particular house, and as per the nature and characteristic of that particular planet, you are going to gain the fruits of that particular Mahadasha and Antardasha. Even though your planets are posited in 6, 8 and 12, then people say that my Mahadasha Lord is going in Trikabhavas. Then definitely it will not go good. No, it is not so. Because you are supposed to enjoy the fruits of Antardasha also. Because even though Mahadasha Lord is your 6, 8 or 12 uh, posited, but Antardasha is going to change partic after particular time period. So definitely according to that Antardasha, sub, 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 dasha, sub, sub, dasha, definitely you are going to enjoy the fruits. But one has to read that properly through chart and no doubt through transit also. So this is the rough idea where we come to know that whether my marriage will happen in Dasha or no, what will be my education. So at that time, you need not go through Jupiter Mahadasha. Maybe you are running Rahu Mahadasha and you are highly qualified because 18 years span is there. If you are born in particular Dasha, say for example, you are born in small Dasha and then you are born in Ketu Dasha. So after Ketu, Venus Dasha is going to start. So you are going to uh, enjoy a lavish fruits of life because Venus is having that particular quality of enjoyment and material life. So maybe in that period, you will become more creative and your whole soul will go towards the creative work or creative studies. Or maybe you will lose your way in a proper, uh, like if your parents want to go to particular stream or you want to go to particular stream and if that Venus, which is your Mahadasha Lord, is not posited in a good nakshatra or in a good house or not holding a good uh, strength, then definitely you have to improve this nakshatra lord also and this mahadasha lord also. So whatever span you are going to get in your life of mahadasha, that is from the age of 15 to 25. That is the most crucial time of your life where you are studying and you are making yourself to prove yourself to this world. So that mahadasha is very, very important to dasha. Because that is your life making dasha. And whatever you are getting after 25, that is your growth period. So that is why we have to get very good dasha and everything is depending on our karmic cycle. As per your karma only, you are going to get this dasha. Many people are not at all getting Venus dasha in their life. They are not able to enjoy the fruits or they are getting Venus dasha at the age of 65 or 70 years. What is the use of getting so much of wealth when they are so old? They could have got it earlier in their 20s. But this is our karma. We are not able to enjoy the functional benefit planet. Say for example, Aquarius, you are born in Aquarius uh, uh, moon. So definitely if Venus Dasha is not coming in your life or when you are 60 over, then you are not able to enjoy the fruits of that Venus in spite of Venus is happening to be your functional benefic planet in that ascendant. See, we have to study this way also. And Jupiter also, every time it is not necessary that uh, in Jupiter Dasha also people are complaining of suffering from any health issues or suffering from progeny issues. You know, in Jupiter Dasha also, they are not able to do proper education also. Here also, then we have to see which house this Jupiter is posited. And no doubt, wherever this bigger planet and heavier planet is posited, then definitely it is going to lessen at least one of the signification of that particular house. 
and lastly whatever dasha you are running if that particular dasha lord is enemy to your ascendant lord and antar dasha is also enemy to that ascendant lord then definitely here your 6th house and 12th house are getting most activated to give you lots of medical treatments or health issues are supposed to face so you have to understand the planets first if you understand the planets then only you are able to derive the fruits that how my mahadasha will go how this antardasha will go whether this mahadasha is definitely coping up with the antardasha lord both of have to be friend if you are running mercury mahadasha or rahu mahadasha and antardasha is of say rahu mahadasha antardasha is of mercury so they both are coping with each other so definitely that will be a suitable time period for you but if it is rahu and surya dasha if it is a rahu or surya dasha then definitely you have to struggle a lot to gain some post position respect all of a sudden you will you will find that oh, i am losing my respect or maybe i am losing my self confidence i am losing my self esteemed value or people are not paying attention towards me this is because of rahu and surya dasha it may definitely drive you towards the political mind also because rahu and sun both planets are uh, very uh, precipitating factors to give politics also at the same time your healing values also increases so you are able to heal people if you have good rahu and sun in your chart because this yuti or this combination will definitely give you good uh, healing power and this combination many people are into healing profession also specifically ayurveda acharyas or vaidyas definitely they are having this combinations but basically the planet it's sunyali yeah sure what i think just a two minute warning yeah so likewise basic rule you have to understand that your mahadasha lord should be friend to your ascendant lord and should be friend to your antar dasha lord then that particular dasha will be at least better and you can expect fruits if they are enemies then don't get afraid that this dasha is not going to go good not at all there are again sub 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 dasha so definitely you are going to get some or other type of fruits so one should not get very very afraid out of this dasha only they have to balance and manage their karmic cycle that is the most important factor of dasha because i am not saying here how many years are given to which planet because everybody knows about it yeah i picked, so that was it yeah yeah thank you sunili ji i picked you to uh introduce this topic because i knew you would cover it very comprehensively both the mahadasha and the antardasha and if uh sam has anything to say but all i want to comment on is the main thing i look at is okay is the mahadasha planet have good dignity <clears throat> does the antar dasha planet have good dignity does the mahadasha planet and the antar dasha planet what is their planetary relationship and then we can really kind of understand the dasha simply in its interaction just by using those classifications so those are some of the classifications i like to use anything you want to say sam on the uh, maha or antar dasha before your first uh presentation actually i'll just i'll just include it in the presentation and i can just present both of my things simultaneous because the first one is pretty easy and then there's a case study and i can fold my comment into that because it's actually very much in alignment with what i'm going to talk about as well okay. so let me ask you then would you discuss the shifting from one mahadasha to the, another and the transitional energies around the shifting of the dasha absolutely and i'm also going to give a case study that shows what makes karma's ripen in 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 the dashas and it also plays into what sunili was was just saying and um also the functional benefic and malefic qualities of the planet so i'm going to share my screen is that okay please okay so here's um an outline that i have 
that shows um, that there's a case study with Angelina Jolie and her breast surgeries, which I'm going to talk about um, in the context of Dasha planets activating the rulers and the Karakas in the Vimshotri Dasha scheme. But the first thing I want my favorite examples are Brad Pitt and Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> but but the first thing is going to be the Dasha Sandhi, which is the shifting from one Mahadasha to the next. And I've found this to be very compelling that the last Antar Dasha of one Mahadasha prepares for the next one. So we tend to look at that. By the way, this is of uh, this is the Vimshotri Dasha that I'm talking about, which is said to be used for all indicators, whereas the conditional dashas are said for different conditions but it's sort of confusing about when to use it. Do we use it just when that condition is showing or do we use it in any chart because you'll have a chart that fulfills many conditions. So when do we use the conditional dasha? It's up for grabs, we're not really sure. Um, but anyway, we do know that Vimshotri is said to be used for all indicators and in all circumstances. So I just decided to focus on that once I started my practice because I'm a little dense and I need to make it simple. So I make it simple this way. But one dasha moving into the next one, we see that the last cycle, that the last bhukti or the last antar dasha is actually preparing for the next maha dasha. And I have it laid out here. It says also that these transitional cycles, one is advised to not make big decisions, especially about getting married or buying a home or something like that, because that last cycle of one maha dasha often feels very transitional because things, big shifts are happening and we're not sure what's going on. So many times you'll see people do something like get married or buy a home. Two of the biggest things that you can do to stabilize your life, people will do it as dashas are shifting, particularly between Venus and the sun, because that's the biggest transition. Venus is 20 years and then the sun is six years and is gonna come and burn up all that Venus stuff in six years. And that last cycle is Venus K2, and all of a sudden in Venus K2, people start changing their friends, everything starts to change, and they're like, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll get married, I'll buy a house. That'll stabilize everything because <laughs> everything feels so unstable. So watch these transitions. But I'm gonna go through each one of them here and you'll just see very clearly that K2 Mercury prepares us for Venus, okay? So again, the last, Antar Dasha of Ketu is Ketu Mercury. So I'm not going to explain that every time, but that's what you understand. So Mercury bridges the severity of Ketu to the sweetness of Venus. So Mercury starts to get us engaged again after Ketu is kind of separating us. Venus Ketu prepares for the sun. So Ketu bridges that sweetness of Venus to the austerity of the sun, because the sun is where we're going to start acting in accordance with clarity, not necessarily with connection, which is what we have with Venus. Then Sun Venus prepares for the moon. So Venus bridges that clarity of the sun to the feelings of the moon. So again, we're in transition when we're in that last Antar Dasha. And the next one is coming, but it's not there yet. So that last planet really bridges it. And then Moon Sun prepares for Mars. So again, this sun bridges that feeling of the moon to the energy and intensity of Mars that's coming. So again, Sun, um, I'm sorry, Moon Sun is starting to prepare us for the Mars Dasha. Then Mars Moon starts to prepare for Rahu. You might say, well, how's Rahu like the moon? Well, Rahu is the nodes of the moon, okay? So you have to remember that the nodes are lunar nodes. And the moon bridges that energy of Mars to the intensity of Rahu and the emotion and feeling of Rahu. Because Rahu is very emotional at first, it's very irrational, and so is the moon. So for Mars, which is very sensible and logical, Mars moon, and all of a sudden, all that sensibility and that, you know, I'm strong, I'm clear, starts to get shaken up. And then the Rahu Dasha, and it's preparing us for Rahu. Then Ju yeah, then Jupiter, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rahu Mars, then prepares us for Jupiter. So Mars destroys a lot of that confusion of Rahu preparing for the lessons of Jupiter. This is a big transition because from Rahu to Jupiter, we've been in an 18 year Rahu cycle and Jupiter is next. Again, Mars starts to destroy all of that confusion, preparing us for that wisdom and clarity and insight and the lessons of Jupiter. Because Jupiter is where we're gonna now look for a high teaching and, an, and, a, and a good guru to help us understand all that Rahu confusion. 
So Rahu Mars destroys a lot of the confusion so that the wisdom of Jupiter can come through. But again, these are transitions. These are often painful transitions because we've been in that long Mahadasha. Now this last thing is here and it's saying, okay, you need to transition now. And I call this Dasha Sandhi because it's just like the transition of one Rashi into another. Those last few degrees are, and the, and the, and the early degrees of the next sign are confusing the same way when Dasha's shift. Um, and then we have Jupiter Rahu prepares for Saturn. So that last section of Jupiter, Jupiter Rahu prepares, it shows the stress of Saturn, you know, to focus that hope of Jupiter. So Jupiter Dasha, there's a lot of teachings and inspiration and guru and, and, and there's, it feels like a lot of growth. But then Jupiter Rahu starts to create this stress like, okay, well, what things do I focus on? What do I concentrate on? I don't know. I've just been, I feel very inspired, but now I feel pressured to have to apply it. So Jupiter Rahu is preparing for that implementation and concentration and focus of Saturn, which is the next Mahadasha. And again, this is also a big transition from Jupiter to Saturn, because Jupiter, again, things feel more abundant and Saturn, they tend to feel more scarce, but it's really just about having to focus the energy because in Jupiter, it's very expansive and Saturn, it's very concentrated. And then Saturn, Jupiter prepares for Mercury. Jupiter bridges that seriousness of Saturn to the curiosity of Mercury. Saturn is a long haul. It's 19 years of feeling like we're just trying to survive it. That last section, about two and a half years, Saturn, Jupiter, and we start to feel expansive, like, whew, okay, I feel like I can breathe now. There's some possibility here. It's not just trying to survive. And that prepares us for Mercury, which is all of the variety and openness and curiosity that comes after Saturn. So again, Saturn, Jupiter starts to prepare us and open us for that. But then we get Mercury, Saturn, which prepares us for Ketu. So Saturn bridges that playfulness and curiosity of Mercury, Dasha, with the focus and severity of Ketu. So as Mercury is ending, K2 is coming. So Saturn says, okay, now you need to concentrate this energy more. You need to take all that you've gathered in Mercury and start to concentrate it because K2 is going to be very much about how much you're able to concentrate and focus on what's the most important. Okay, so these da this Dasha Sandhi is really important. Um, and to just, as I say, continue with it um, because I have to be leaving here, but I can just show you this and I'm going to have this download for you so you can watch this a few times if it might go a little fast but you'll be able to see this it's a pretty simple principle with a case study and it also builds on what Sunili was saying and and uh, Kshanati as well one of the main things that we'll see is the functional nature of the planets as well are very important in their dasha um, scheme of course the dignities are important but also just the functional nature of the planet as as we understand, the planets have a relationship with the Dasha Lord. So for, and I have a case study here with Angelina Jolie. She's a cancer and she had her breast surgeries. Um, all of these things started when she was in her Venus Mercury Dasha. Now Venus Mercury, it's these two gentle planets. Shouldn't that be good? Well, they're two functional malefics. Venus rules the 11th house, which is, which is a functional, which is a functional malefic. And Mercury is the third and 12th Lord. So again, even though they're two gentle planets for a cancer person, they're two functional malefics. Um, and this also illustrates a principle of what the Dasha planets activate in their Dashas. You want to understand that the Dasha planets activate the rulers and the Karakas in the Rashis and the Vargas. So these are very simple yet precise rules for Dasha planets activating the Karmas. And I've been using this formula and fine tuning it for more than a decade. So you want to understand that in the Dasha cycles, the karmas are produced based on the planet as a karika, means, for example, Venus is the karika of relationships, of, you know, of a beauty and things like that. Um, also as a house ruler. So in her Venus, Dasha, because she's a cancer, Venus also rules the fourth and the tenth houses. By the way, fourth house is breasts. Um, and then the dispositor of any planets in their signs in the harmonic charts as well. So for example, Venus rules any planets in Libra and Taurus. Again, she was in Venus Mercury. So it also shows any planets in Virgo or um, Gemini, but also the nakshatras. Again, planets, also the dispositor of any planets in their nakshatras. So again, especially with Mercury, 
planets in Mercury's signs or nakshatras, Angelina Jolie has three planets in Revati, which is ruled by Mercury. So when she was in Venus Mercury, it activated all these planets in Taurus, as well as being a functional malefic. It activated Saturn in the 12th because it's ruled by Mercury, and it activated Mars, Moon, and Jupiter in Revati. Now again, it, it was an auspicious thing ultimately because she lived, she didn't die from it or whatever, but it's a very interesting case study. All of the things that the planets rule in their dashas and also the functional nature of the planets because Venus, Mercury are two functional malefics means that it's a struggle. Um, and then all of the planets that get activated based on what the planets rule as a, as a karaka, as a house ruler, as a dispositor of the planets in the signs and in the nakshatras. So there's no hierarchy in the above list, meaning it's not more important that, for example, that Mercury rules Gemini than it is that it rules Revity. It's all the same. It's just activating the planets, okay? But you look for confluence of factors to see what the most prevalent issues will be. So in this case, again, I'm just going to jump right down to the chart, but you see this was about breast surgery, okay? Um, now, again, we have to look for what are indicators of the breasts, okay? First of all, the sign of cancer is certainly the sign of the breasts. The fourth house, the fourth house ruler, and the moon. These are all the things that you would see for breasts, okay? So her Venus dasha, first of all, Venus is in the first house, which is her body, and it's also the sign of cancer. Boom. Venus is also the fourth house ruler. Boom. Breasts. And Mercury also rules the moon, which is the karaka of breasts, right? And Mercury also, um, of course, is the ruler of her Lugna Lord, which is her, which is her physical body. So we see pretty much everything that would show breasts in Venus Mercury, including obviously not just breasts, but her physical body, because she's a cancer ascendant, which is literally not just the breasts, but Again, this body part is very, you know, crucial to a cancer person, right? So in Venus Mercury, we see all of those things that activate, first of all, the breasts. But then what about something like surgery? Okay, surgery is shown by things that are cutting. Again, this includes especially the planets, the Sun, K2, and Mars. These are the three planets of any kind of surgery. Do we see those things getting activated here? Okay, Venus rules K2 in Critica cutting. Kritika is the nakshatra of surgery. Oops, I didn't mean to draw on that. The moon also rules, I'm sorry, Venus also rules the sun, obviously in um, Taurus, and Mercury rules Mars in Revity. And again, Mars has also joined the moon, and it's also, it also rules Jupiter, the sixth house ruler, which is also in Revity. So again, if we're looking at surgery, sixth house is the thing that shows surgery. So again, every indicator of breasts and surgery are activated by Venus Mercury. And I've heard astrologers talk about how, how, why did she get all this breast surgery in Venus Mercury? Well, if you don't understand what makes karmas ripen, it's going to be very confusing. Venus is good. It's in the first house. It makes her beautiful. Yes, and it's a functional malefic. One of the worst, actually, for cancer, if you've done research. Mercury as well because it's the third house ruler. Now, again, it also shows that this was a successful surgery and she did it of her own will and her own volition. She didn't have breast cancer. She did it of her own will and her own volition, which is also Mercury. She said, I'm gonna get ahead of this and use my intelligence and discrimination and have this preventative surgery done so that I don't get it, which is very third house and very Mercury kind of thing, right? And so you can see this, very clearly shown um, in this um, case study. By the way, this is also a case study for transits. At the time she had the breast surgery, it was also a case study that I did for aspects by transit. You can see when you look at the chart of the first surgery, Saturn was aspecting by transit her first house and that Venus in the first house because Saturn was here. Saturn casts a third and 10th house aspect. So you see Saturn was putting an aspect right here on that first house. And we also see that Mars by transit, aspects by transit, which is a very important concept with, with two levels of dasha and aspects, especially if you use aspects by transit as well, you can do incredibly precise work. But you can see that Mars by aspect 
is also aspecting all these planets in Taurus, the ones that show all this surgery. Mars is literally putting a very direct aspect, especially six degrees on her natal Ketu and also um, uh, uh, the sun. We also see that Jupiter by aspect was going through this house that showed all this surgery at the time. So the whole time she was getting that surgery, which was being um, activated by the Mahadasha planet, Venus, Jupiter was going through that same house at the time she had all these surgeries. So again, when you, this is a very clear, it's not even that hard to see it. If you use two levels of dashas, especially if you understand the functional nature of the planets, like Sunili said, and um, Shanati as well, that Venus isn't just a good one. It's a functional planet, means it's a cruel planet for cancer, and you understand what makes karmas ripen, then you're not confused. And you can see this very clearly, especially when you also bring in the aspects by transit. So that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to get, so I think it was good to be able to get both of these in. And you can watch this video over and over again if it went kind of fast, but you'll be able to download this in the video. But I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to say. I hope I didn't go over my time. You did great, Sam. Uh, just unshare the screen there. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, there we go. So yes, and uh, Sam, when uh, Angelina Jolie uh, got operated that time, Ketu was also there in Mars sign. I think it was in Aries. Yeah. So whenever Ketu goes in Aries, particularly, and uh, if transit is precipitating. So definitely it uh, gives some or other type of uh, uh, surgical procedures, no matter it can be endoscopy also. Because basically Aries is the first sign where Ashwini Nakshatra lies. And, yeah, and uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and I could have is, talked, I'm sorry, I, 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 I could have talked <laughs> about okay. the transit chart more. I, I actually made it quite yeah. abbreviated, but K2 was in Kritika. Jupiter was also the sixth house yes. ruler by transit. There was a lot of yes. things, but I wanted to just kind of get through the main parts of it. But the transit chart itself, you could just show it by the transits, actually. It was fantastic. Very nicely uh, you explained it. And uh, Thank our you. Mahadasha tells everything. And I, will, I would just like to add here, one basic rule to uh, see the health also means how the person's health if any prashna chart comes to you and you do not know the mahadasha also or if you know the mahadasha so there are four uh, four aspect of it first house is patient himself or herself that is rogi that means the sick person first house that is first lord opposite is rogue Rogue means what is the disease? That is the seventh house. Then see first house lord, then see seventh house lord. Tenth house is a doctor. That means whether this person is going to uh, get proper medication or no, whether this person is going to lie in hospital only. And then fourth house is your own uh, discharge, like you will be at home or no. These four houses plays very, very important role whenever you are seeing any type of health aspect, specifically whether this person will come out soon or no, or which is the particular Mahadasha. And whatever Mahadasha is very stronger out of all these four planets, that will give you the proper result. Wonderful. Folks, I have to leave, and I, I really thank you for inviting me, Kshana T, and everyone, all the great students watching this live and also through the recording. I'm glad I got to present what I did, and I'm very sorry to have to run. It's okay. We'll plan another one soon. Love you, Sada Siva. All right, folks. Take care. Sunali, Namashivaya, Kshana T, and everyone. Bye-bye. Blessings, my take brother. Take care. So Sunili, it's you and me for the rest. Of the <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, uh, I was thinking of uh, leaving early because uh, this is already night here, and well, uh, you'll uh, certainly have yeah. time to present. But uh, but but uh, I will definitely give you some more time because other two people are absent here. So yeah, uh, 
I am I am there with you for some more time. I'll go and, through my, um, I'll go through my topics quickly. Yeah, sure. So so that uh, I can also have my dinner then, and I can uh, again uh, tomorrow is working day for me. Wonderful. Okay, good. So um, for my uh, topic, I would like to be more specific, and instead of discussing how the Dasha system works. I would like to discuss specific dasha. And people ha seem to have a lot of confusion about Rahu and K2 dashas. So I would like to get into the discussion of what the Rahu and K2 dasha is for each individual, for each person in their lives, what they can do to live with it, what they can do to understand it, what they can do to remedy with it, and how to understand these dasha. Now, the first thing about Rahu Dasha is that Rahu is considered fog and smoke. And if there is too much fog and smoke, you wouldn't be going driving a fast car, would you? Because if you did, then you would get into a car accident. So one of the things that the Rahu Mahadasha does is it takes away our ability to accurately predict our own future. Now, people with strong Rahus are actually very intuitive at predicting and seeing other people's futures. But when it comes to seeing their own path, when it comes to seeing their own future, they can be dealing with a lot of Maya, the Sanskrit word for illusion. So that is one thing to consider, is that Rahu kind of Dasha takes our way ability to accurately perceive the future. So if you're in Rahu Dasha and you're thinking about the future and you're speculating about the future and you're trying to control the future, well, odds are it's going to end badly with destructive events. Another thing is that Rahu represents a Dharma to some extent, but it also represents Dharma. We don't understand. We say, oh, Rahu is a Dharma, but we don't understand how it leads us to the Dharma. See, first we go through a Dharmic experiences, which means we're in the Rahu Dasha and we go through many experience, circumstances, and situations, and we say to ourselves, this is not who I am. This is not what I want. This is not what I want to be doing. This is not how I want to be spending my time. This is not what I like. But those experiences are equally as valuable. Because when you go through that experience, you learn what you do like, what you do want, what you do need, what you do deserve. So even though Rahu gives you hard knock, tough lessons sometimes, there's no better way to learn a lesson because you find out truly who you are and what we are in the most deepest spiritual dharmic sense by removing all the maya, all of the illusion. And really the Rahu Dasha, it wants to remove the maya away from your life. But first you must confront the maya and you must experience the maya and you must understand that I am experiencing Maya and it will lead you on a path of truth and it will lead you on a path of righteousness. A few other things that I wanna mention about the Rahu Mahadasha is that people during Rahu Mahadasha, um, everyone has their higher self, which is represented by Jupiter. And then some people have their lower self, which we can say is sometimes represented by an immature Rahu. Now, the Rahu Dasha wants you to evolve you into your higher self, but you'll be tempted with experiences calling you back to your lower self. For example, let's say that before Rahu Dasha, earlier in your life, you used to smoke, smoke cigarette. Then, the Rahu Dasha begin. You start to smoke cigarette again. 
this is a very common example. You stop alcohol, you start drinking during Rahu Mahadasha again. You stop marijuana, you start smoking the marijuana during the Rahu Mahadasha again. And ultimately, these are just band-aids. And really what you want to do is go, um, Rahu rents, represents austerity in its most mature and evolved form. So instead of going to the path of escape and drugs and alcohol, we go to the path of meditation, pranayama, bhakti yoga, and chanting. And Rahu, the great, before he became Rahu, the, his human form, Swarbhanu. Swarbhanu was an extremely dedicated yogi. So we must remember that Rahu also, in his own sense, is an extremely dedicated yogi, and in his most mature evolution is a dedicated yogi. But it has the temptation to fall to its vulnerabilities. Sometimes it falls off of its correct path to get onto its correct path. And sometimes it has to experience many new things to find the things that is right for him or that is right for it. The next thing I like to discuss is about the Ketu Mahadasha. Now, the Ketu Mahadasha, Ketu is the Moksha Karaka. Because Ketu is the Moksha Karaka, not everyone who's going through Ketu Dasha is an old person. So not every Ketu Mahadasha has to do with death. But every K2 Mahadasha has to do with transformation and spirituality. See, because K2 is the giver of omens and obstacles. So when you enter your K2 Dasha, if you are on your correct spiritual path, no matter what age that you are at, the universe will show you that you are on your correct path. There is a red bird on my window. There is a blue bird by my car. There is money coming in that I was unexpected. All of these surprising <clears throat> unexpected rewards when K2 shows that we are in alignment with our highest spiritual frequency. But if we are not in alignment with our highest spiritual path, if we are not in alignment with our highest spiritual frequency, K2 will send many obstacles into your life. And they can be very destructive. And they can get increasingly destructive as they go on. So it's very important to understand, if you're in Ketu Mahadasha, what is the level of omens and obstacles in my life? Am I getting good omens to interpret? Or am I getting obstacles that are causing me suffering? but the obstacles can be very serious. I always use this example. Let's say there is a lawyer who's meant to be guru. First day he is driving, he, he becomes uh, a, a partner at his law firm. He's driving to his uh, office and his tire pops. Now, normally when a tire pops, we don't think anything of it. We think of it as accident. But here, K2 is giving an obstacle or an omen. He's saying to the person, please do not take this path. This is not the proper path for yourself anymore. So let's say another week goes by. He's on his way to work. This time, the he's in the left lane of the um, highway and the transmission in his car begins to fail. So his car stops working completely. He pulls over to the emergency lane as quickly as he can, 30 seconds before a giant truck was going to hit him and end his life. Now, of course, if you're a spiritual person, you might think, hey, something's up. Maybe the universe is trying to tell me something. 
But if you're not a spiritual person, you'll take a cab to work. And then when you get to work, you tell your boss what happened and he give you the company car. He says, oh, you lose your car, it has to be in the shop, use the company car. But remember, law is not the dharma of this person. This person is meant to be spiritual teacher. So now K2 is getting angrier and angrier and angrier because the person is not noticing any of the messages that K2 is sending to them. So now the person is driving in the company car on the way to work. And the next thing they know is they wake up in the hospital, broken knees, broken ankles, broken hands, all in cast, and they are in bed for six to nine months. Now, I have to say this was K2, and K2 can be destructive and forceful in how it teaches us in this way. Because while this man was in the hospital, someone give him the Yoga Sutras. Someone give him the Bhagavad Gita. And he decide that when he gets healthy, he's going to go to India. He's going to go to the Himalayas. And when he gets to India, he's walking around and a 90 year old man in an orange robe comes up to him and says, you are my disciple. I have been waiting my whole life for you. So this is the kind of karma of K2. We have this higher calling, but until we align to it, until we reach it, K2 will cause destructive events during its Mahadasha. So you know in your K2 Mahadasha, if you are on the correct path, whether your life is full of obstacles, that means you have to transform and change your life, or your life is obstacle-free and you are, everything is working out. And that is a good sign that you are in a very mature and evolved version of your Ketu Dasha. Um, before I move on to Sunili's next topic, anything you'd like to share about Ketu or Rahu Mahadasha Sunili Ji? Oh, I have to unmute you. One second. Um, you're still muted. One second. Oh, here we go. How about now? Is the unmute? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Ketu, uh, Ketu and Rahu, very rightly you said, because Ketu and Rahu are nodes. Everybody knows about it and grahas are devatas and Rahu Ketu are demons. You know, so whenever, and that is why we are born. Why we are human being? Because of our Rahu Ketu karmic cycle, we are born. Otherwise, we would have been devatas. Because, because all other planets from Sun to Saturn, all are devatas, right? And Rahu Ketu, when we are bound to uh, get the dasha or when we are bound to get rahu ketu transit over our mahadasha lord also it is not necessary that every time you have to uh, get uh, the dasha of rahu or ketu mahadasha no doubt you are also getting the antar dasha but when whenever rahu or ketu are transiting over your dasha lord also or antar dasha lord also that time also you are bound to experience certain things. Ketu is the last and last breath of our life. I should say that. That is why 12th house we consider for Ketu. And whenever Ketu is posited in 12th house, it is said that person can detach himself from the worldly affair. But when, when this Ketu is posited in particular tattva and particular sign, it is not for all signs because many people I have seen that they are having Ketu in 12th house, but yeah, they, they seem to be spiritual, but they are not at all uh, able to live the material life. So yeah. this is Ketu. And when we talk about Rahu, so Rahu itself is a uh, fantasy showing planet. You know, Rahu is a uh, illusionary planet. Whenever Rahu Dasha you are under 
uh, going that time all of a sudden things will happen like you said that you do not know accident is going to happen you are going to go to hospital or something so definitely this is a rahu playing role and whenever certain things related to your health or related to so, uh, sudden events are happening in your life no matter they are good events or adverse events that time somewhere this rahu is playing very very important role you just see in your dasha sequence also somewhere rahu will be definitely connected in dasha sequence or in transit uh, along with your dasha lord definitely rahu ketu will be 100 percent there that is by default then only you will experience these types of fruits and this is kaliyuga planets that is why we have to uh, experience and that is why we say that we have to worship ketu we have to worship rahu by chanting uh, mantras of rahu ketu and always it is advisable even though you have good rahu or you have good ketu or whatever it is it is bound and it is mandatory everybody must chant rahu ketu mantras um that is an excellent answer i'm getting a couple questions and they're saying oh well what happens if you're born in k2 dasha what happens if you're born in rahu mahadasha i think if you're born in rahu mahadasha it can be very good because you don't have to go through a lot of the difficult experiences later in life but then it can also call childhood traumatic events that you do not have control over especially if rahu is not in a good position now if you're born in your ketu mahadasha that's very significant because it shows that in your past lifetimes you were on the path to ketu but amarta kama moksha nama rogya mula mutama dharma arta kama moksha there's no moksha without dharma arta kama so the people that are born in ketu dasha often are seeking moksha but will skip arta or kama and have to come back in their life to complete that before they can prepare for their final moksha uh the maha samadhi um so that was a very fun question i really much enjoyed that uh the next question that i have for you suneeli ji is would you share your research application or any methods related to bimshadari dasha that um you would like to share yeah see basically uh, many people have uh, dilemma or difference of opinion that my mahadasha is not going good or how my mahadasha will go as you said that rahu mahadasha is such a long mahadasha if uh, it is coming for 18 years in your life and if it is coming at the age of 20 then your whole life maximum life of next till your age 40 around 40 you are going to experience rahu dasha right so this rahu dasha is something like you know whenever you are born in rahu dasha what you were talking i will just extend to it that rahu is like you are born reborn of one of your ancestor that is for sure because rahu is definitely connected to our ancestors our uh, uh, forefathers so definitely when you are born particularly with rahu nakshatra or rahu ascendant rising that time we can reconnect or we can resemble your uh, characteristic towards any of your ancestor or you have that certain qualities in you and when you are born in ketu dasha particularly that means you are born to repay certain pending karmas or pending desires in this life and then you have to see that which house this ketu is posited that particular house is asking you to repay the rinas repay the pending things in this life and then you have to see the particular relative connected to that house see this all small small things are very very important and once you you know all these things definitely this uh, uh, this uh, uh, things will be very much easier and clear to you say for example your ketu is posited in your 9th house of chart 
okay and if you are running ketu dasha or ketu antar dasha is coming for you so definitely your work towards or your duty towards your dharma your duty towards your fatherly figure or your father your duty towards your social reputation definitely increases so whatever signification related to that ketu definitely you have to enhance and you have to accept the things whatever you are going to experience in that dasha people ask that whether my fortune enhancement will take place or no because i am not going to get any good dasha in my life because uh, people somebody asked that which dasha is best it is nothing like which dasha is best maybe ketu dasha was fantastic for me rahu dasha war was more fascinating for me but jupiter dasha was not at all good for me being a benefic planet also and in this uh, this this time what we see that uh, yeah we, we welcome dharmesh mehta ji namaste dr dharmesh let me just unmute you so whenever we are getting benefic planet dasha also but still we are experiencing that this dasha period is not very much beneficial to us so that time we have to understand that here your functional benefic and functional malefic uh, you know theory comes into existence whether it is beneficial planet for me or no or even though it is functional benefic planet into your chart but if it is posited uh, in a malefic house or if it is posited with nodes like you are running mercury dasha but mercury dasha is posited with ketu or rahu or posited in nakshatra of rahu or ketu then definitely the fruits will vary whatever fruits you are going to get i will just uh, uh, also add on to my topic that the simplest method also to see the mahadasha so it is a tarabal what we say jam, janma sampat vipat whatever everybody must be aware about is that whatever nakshatra you are born into that is your janma tara that is your birth star then comes the uh, sampat tara sampat tara means that is going to give you good fruits janma sampat then comes the vipat tara vipat tara means some adversely fruits also you will experience and some better fruits also you will experience that is a vipat tara say for example if you are born in rahu nakshatra so whatever na rahu nakshatras are there in 27 nakshatras like adra nakshatra then swati nakshatra and shatatarka nakshatra all these three nakshatras are your janma taras janma tara means you are born with that particular nakshatra so definitely whenever mahadasha of this janma tara will happen to you so it is bound to give you at least better fruits i will not say it will give you fantastic fruits then comes the sampat tara sampat tara means it will give you assurance that definitely good is going to happen sampat means it will give you blessings that is a blissful moment of your life so even though you are running mahadasha of vipat tara vipat means something uh, adverse something uh, not good but if you are running dasha of vipat tara but antar dasha is of sampat tara then definitely the fruits will vary so this is the very commonest and easiest method to see the tarabal and to decide that what type of fruits you are you will be getting uh, through your mahadasha then you have to just coordinate this fruits along with your events which which are going to happen and the events which are there in your mind that people come that whether my marriage is going to happen or no whether my new job is going to happen or no so definitely then i have to see that whether this person is having any type of sampat tara or shem tara dasha or antar dasha so particular that phase i will see say for example at present if somebody is asking me that whether my marriage will happen or no but that person is running say vipat tara dasha right and uh, uh, pratyari tara also so i will say that no you have to wait till this particular patch and then the kshem tara dasha right or sadhya dasha will come that time only your work will be done or your marriage at least marriage fixing will take place or you will get good alliance or you will get good proposal in your life so that your seventh house will get most activated no doubt 
that time we definitely have to see the seventh lord connection also to this dasha unless and until this seventh lord connection is there definitely your seventh house is not going to get activated in spite of having sampat tara dasha so janma sampat vipat kshem pratyari sadak vad mitra and adhimitra so adhimitra is the bestest dasha one should have so even though you are having mitra mahadasha say for example uh, your mercury is your mitra and adhimitra happens to be another planet like surya planet or something so definitely this dasha is going to give you what you never expected in your life such type of fruits you are bound to experience in your dasha so this is the bestest uh, method to see the mahadasha fruits in one's life another method you can see that if your mahadasha lord is uh, posited in <clears throat> first house ninth house or fifth house of chart that is trikon trine houses so definitely this trine houses or dharma trikon is getting activated so that means that at least you are going to experience certain good fruits in this dasha and then signification of that particular house you have to see that what type of fruits i am going to experience in this dasha even though you are running your eighth lord dasha but if that eighth lord is going in your first house of chart or fifth house of chart or ninth house of chart then definitely you will experience this fruits in connection to your fifth house that means your all your purva sanchit karma is going to get activated during this eighth lord dasha because your fifth house is also simultaneously getting activated during this dasha Thanks. or first house is, is connected then first house dasha thank you senior so kshanati this way uh, definitely we can see this that was such a comprehensive and excellent explanation now while you were gone a uh, very special uh man has joined us today a very close friend of mine it is with deep happiness i'm able to share dr darmesh mehta joining us from mumbai uh dr darmesh is a great teacher for many years and offers teachings via his youtube channel dm astrology he's rich in experience in analyzing charts He's received many prestigious awards, including this year, and recognitions for his work in the fields of Jyotish, including Jyotish Vicharad, Jyotish Ratna, Jyotish Bhushan. And so Dr. Dharmash Mehta may be reached for consultation by his website, dmastrology.com. Welcome, Dr. Dharmash. It's so nice to have you. Yeah, Namaste Shanti. Again, it is a panel discussion it is uh, very useful and i also congratulate other who has also joined uh, i'll directly reach to my point that uh, uh, it's a north indian system which i follow many are following the south indian square type i follow as a north indian style in north indian style we have a two shape of uh, houses i discuss in my kendra tikon also so that oh, uh, kendra uh, house which uh, is called uh, as during your discussion we yeah. also discuss um activation time and muharta yeah thank you yeah i'll be for that only i'll be coming so what i say that in the square type that is a kendra house the transit rules more and for the triangle shape house i am not talking about the triangle house but triangle shape house which is 2 3 5 6 8 9 and 11 12 these are the triangle different different shape of a triangle house that the dasha is more prominent because this triangle house is used with some precondition and that precondition is a time a triangle shape house if i again i am repeating i am not talking about the triangle it is a triangle <clears throat> shape house that is 2 3 5 6 7 8 and 11 12 Eight uh, nine sorry. So triangle house interpretation is to be done with the dasha only because they are prefixed with some time. It never allowed always. So whenever we talk about the transit, it will be a ma majorly 
useful for the kendra house square house and this desha is basically used for the triangle shaped house so that is very prominent and apply it you will find a good result whenever you use the dasha in the triangle shape houses you will get a exact result transit will not about to hill because this houses need some pre condition like suppose we give i give the example of a second house for second house it shows that in second house you all need a money when the money will come so here that's a pre condition if you keep a good relation so this is a pre condition and it is only available to the certain period of time that is why we call where is the dhan yoga where is all raj yoga at that time the native will be benefited in their financial way like gajakesri yoga very common but it need to have a moon dasha and jupiter dasha so my first basic thing is that apply majority dasha into the triangle shape houses in kendra houses in 14710 if dasha comes then okay otherwise don't wait for the dasha result for the kendra houses apply immediately transit because kendra houses suppose i say about the fourth house somebody asked me that when i will take my home my house if i see the dasha it will never come suppose it comes in the eighth dasha ninth dasha or that dasha either mars dasha or fourth lord dasha has came in the early age in the childhood now now what happen he will not get a property he will get when transit will come so first basic fundamental is for dasha is apply dasha in the triangle shape house it will be more relevant any dasha now coming to the dasha it is dasha is based in the para dphs it is written apply two dasha simultaneously don't wait for the one dasha one should be the sign base house base or uh, na one base is a sign or house base and one should be a moon base if you apply this both then only you will get actual result i basically use the vimshotri dasha and kal chakra dasha because one both the base are different so here you will get a confirmed result because when you are using the moon based dasha it's depend on your moon if your moon is powerful then only you will be able to get the dasha who base on the moon if your ascendant is more powerful then apply the ascendant your or sign based uh, dasha like yogini dasha or kal chakra dasha so that i so also have completed that which dasha to be interpreted now as uh, uh, our uh, sunil ji has mentioned about the tarabal in 2016 i released uh, one video about the uh, secret of dasha you can see that secret of dasha where i mentioned this uh, uh, all the tarabal as a janma sampat all this whereas we got from the dasha that in vinshotri we consider we never able to enjoy the fruits of first dasha majority of the second dasha because that goes in the childhood when we are studying when we are very young and eighth dasha and ninth dasha this four dasha first second eighth ninth this dasha hardly we face in our life so what happened we don't get the result of this planets yeah the dasha rule says that dasha is nothing but the time to planet to explore its reason when you find that you don't have a first dasha in your hand you will be a child you don't have a dasha in the second dasha because that is the time where you are dependent you are dependent on family education and last two dasha 8 and 9 what uh, sunil ji is talking about the mitra dasha and adi mitra that's hardly one will get if he about 90 years about 100 years then he will touch eight dasha or ninth dasha so this reality we should understand that we are hardly enjoying the first dasha second dasha eighth dasha and ninth dasha so we have the dasha in our control that is our third dasha fourth dasha fifth dasha and sixth dasha because seventh is again the maraka is called vada nidan and maraka so we don't enjoy this dasha seventh dasha so in our hand it is only third fourth fifth and sixth these are the four dasha one has to see and one has to see if this planet who's coming in the third dasha fourth dasha fifth dasha and sixth dasha dr dharma is... two minute warning on the uh, first uh, presentation yeah yeah i'm concluding sir yeah 
So here we have to see that we are not going to enjoy first, second, and eight, nine dasha. So whatever the four planets has remained, that are the main dasha core part of our one's life. And in that period, whenever the sub period of eight, nine will come, then only that short period of the anta dasha you are going to enjoy. So apply these three rules in Kendra. Only use the transit if dasha. It is an additional benefit. But triangle shape house only use the dasha. You will find a good result. Sequence wise also first, second, and eight, nine dasha you are not going to enjoy. And third principle is that apply two dasha simultaneously. One from the uh, ascendant uh, with either sign or house lord dasha like Kal Chakra and Yogini, or a second base should be moon base like Vimsha three or Ashto three. So that is my uh, basic rule about the dasha that how to use this dasha. And in second part we'll discuss the how the Mars dasha and in Antar dasha to be interpreted. So I am here uh, concluding my introduction part of a dasha and whatever the important rule about the dasha. So we may go to the next view. Hello. Yeah, it was uh, the image really it was uh, really fantastic. But uh, as you said that eighth and ninth dasha are uh, everybody is not. Uh, getting very fortunate people are those who are getting that dasha but as i said that if even though if you are running uh, any vipata tara dasha but antar dasha is uh, say of mitra tara or adhimitra tara then definitely you are uh, bound to get better fruits at least that vipatti will at least not come or it will subside or it will be half away like at least 50 percent of fruits you will definitely get out of it yeah yeah I say about the main dasha of eight and nine that will never come in our yeah, life. Yeah, that is. So we have to enjoy uh, that, that is, result in the sub period. As a sub period, yes, we can yes. enjoy this result. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Shanati. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that when it comes to the dasha activation time, you look at the maha dasha, you look at the antar dasha, and you look at the planets which are transiting. And when all of those things seem to align, you seem to see these huge karmic events happen in our individual lives, in society. It's a combination of the Mahadasha, Antardasha, and transit, where we see these heavy activations take place uh, in society and in our individual lives. And I think Dr. Dharmesh and Sunili would concur. Um, now, the next thing um, which I would like to discuss, since Dr. Dharmesh was a little late, um, Dr. Dharmesh, would you discuss the sequence of Dasha and a little bit of its significance? Yeah, I have given in my earlier contention. I can further discuss in detail also. But Just I thought a little more. A Just a little more about the sequence of the Dasha. Yeah. So see, basically, uh, everybody is using the Vimshotri. Worldwide, the people are using the Vimshotri Dasha only. And as I mentioned, that the sequence of dasha is very important as uh, Tarabal is uh, giving the strength about it. Normally, all the odd dasha, see, two things has given in the Vimsutri dasha and VPHS or by Parashara. That one sequence is, as we are discussed about the sequence, one sequence is about the years, that is, upper years and lower years. If Ketu is uh, lower year seven, then Venus will be the biggest year. Sun again lower, then Moon is higher. Mars again lower, the Rao is higher. Jupiter little lesser than Saturn is more. Mercury is little uh, less or it is more than Ketu is little less. So one thing is a trend is like uh, our cardiogram. It's like a cardiogram that one dasha will lower, second dasha is more, third dasha is lower, fourth dasha will higher. Now what happens, the beauty lies here, the sequence is that in which dasha you born. When I do the plant cesarean, I always try to keep in, and this is not a secret, I always try to keep the nakshatra which is having a smaller dasha. Because as per the sequence it is say, all the odd dashas are an exit point. Yeah, it is an exit point and I apply this in the many charts, all the odd dasha is maximum and odd is an exit time. Like a first dasha is a balaris when the child can die. Third dasha due, due to the vipat, due to the difficulty, due to the uh, so much stress, people may take a 
uh, uh, some drastic uh, step about their life. Fifth dasa because of the pretentary. Pretentary is a Sanskrit word which means tension, worries, and anxiety. Chinta, hatasha, and niraza. Tension, worries, and anxiety. Because whatever you have created, fifth house. See, I always link a dasha sequence with the house. First dasa, first house activate. Second dasa, some part second house will activate. Now, third is a third house because third house you come out to the world and you face a lot of challenges. Fourth house, khetra and chema. Means it is a time of expansion. So all the material pleasure will be expanded. Fifth dasa is a pretentary means creating tension, worries and anxiety. Whatever you have created, like your child, like your education, like your business, profession, whatever you have created, that gives you a tension for the settlement. Sixth dasa is a sadhak dasa. Again, it's an even sequence, but it is in the sixth house. So what happens if you act, then only it will react. Sixth dasa means sadhak. Just sit like an idol. Now, till fifth dasa, you have done all the deeds. Now it is time to enjoy the fruits. In our ancient time, our sages say that when the sixth dasa starts, it's a time to one prasthan. Go to the uh, wood, go to the uh, uh, isolation place and do the meditation. This is a sixth dasa. The parashara is likely to say that it's a, it's a your sadhak dasa. Just sit idly and enjoy whatever you have created. Then seventh dasa is the official time. As I told you that all the odd dasa sequence are the exit point. So seventh dasa again, it is the official time to exit. Vada, Nidana and Maraka. There are three words given for this. Vada, Nidana and Maraka. Means we know seven thousand is a Maraka. Now it is a situation. In seventh dasa, a person is there. His situation is same like a first house or first dasa. In childhood, he is not able to walk alone. He needs some support. In seventh dasa, he will become old. He needs some support. Food pattern also same. Here also there is no teeth has come. In seventh dasa, there is no teeth has balance. Same. Strength wise also, first dasa, the child has no strength. In seventh dasa, the person don't remain with the strength. So these are the exactly same dasa. I have seen when the person born in the Ketu dasa, Sun dasa, he will enjoy seven dasa. But if he born in the Mars dasa, then he will enjoy only five dasa. If he born in the Rahu dasa, this is very important. If it is uh, uh, Rahu dasa, then it is very important that in the Rahu dasa, if somebody born, he may face a four or fifth dasa because Rahu, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury all are a big dasa where it will lead to 70 and 80 years. So person will not able to enjoy that for the long term. So this sequence is very important when we are conducting the sequence. Then first dasa, second dasa, I told you it goes to the childhood. Seventh and does eight dasa will not able to give the result. Yeah, the balance dasa of the third, four, fifth, six that you can enjoy. It depends on the planet or dasha which you born, and that gives you the result. So whatever the planet you born, whatever the nakshatra star you born, accordingly your sequence will start. And suppose one person born in the even bigger dasha like Venus dasha or Moon dasha or uh, Rahu dasha, then his good part of a life, like second dasha, fourth dasha, or sixth dasha, will be a small time. Like a Mercury dasha, somebody born, then his second dasha will be Ketu, small. Fourth dasha, Sun, small. Sixth dasha, Ketu, very small. So, uh, Mars, very small. So, likewise, this sequence plays a very important role. And I must say here that dasha is, dasha is nothing but the lock, Anta dasha is key. When Antar Dasha you are seeing, Antar Dasha is a clock and Pratyantar Dasha is a key. So every lower part is a key for the upper part. So you should apply lower to upper, lower to upper, lower to upper. As I said, it is a six different part, but we should always apply three only. Mahadasha, Antar Dasha and Pratyantar Dasha. If you go beyond this, the Shastra say, see the transit. It will be better to locate the event in the transit rather than go to the Sukshma Dasha, Pran Dasha or Pada Dasha. So this is my ultimate uh, views about the sequence and uh, we can proceed ahead. Just such an excellent and comprehensive uh, answer, Dr. Darmesh. And you also responded to a lot of the other presentations that the other astrologers did. And if the viewers of this video take what you discussed, 
and also what Sam Jeffy discussed and combine the sequences of the dasha, we can really understand if the sequence from one dasha to another can be beneficial or non-beneficial using both Dr. Darmesh's and Sam Jeffy's methods. Uh, do you have a little more time to discuss uh, Saturn Dasha with me, Dr. Darmesh, I would like to present on? Yeah, surely. Why okay, not? good, good. You're staying up late with me. You are the midnight soldier. <laughs> yeah. So I would like to discuss Saturn Maha Dasha in thorough detail. Now, Saturn is called Chanaischaraya in Sanskrit, and that means the slow-moving planet. And all of the major planets, Saturn is the one which is the farthest from the sun and the slowest moving. So we know that it moves slowly. So if you are in Saturn Mahadasha, you can expect things in your life to move a little bit slower. But it says that no spiritual, this is from Parashara, that no spiritual change or growth manifests without the Saturn. So we think Jupiter as planet for spiritual growth. We think of other planets as spiritual growth, and they help us learn spiritual knowledge and information. But what helps us integrate it, what helps us apply it, it is Saturn. And so Saturn is the planet which gives us the virtues. Virtues is what makes us a spiritual person. See, people say, I am spiritual, but you cannot measure spirituality. How do you measure spirituality? You cannot. But one of the ways that spirituality can be measured is by virtue. Some of the virtues include uh, honesty, patience, humility, yeah. and acceptance. And you can't measure how amount you have of these things, but Saturn can and Saturn will. And Saturn will reward you in your life based on the amount of quality you have in these things and will be deal with you consequences if you do not align to these vibrations in your chart. And based on the position of the Saturn, it might be hard for you to be patient, humble, and accepting, or it might, not, might become natural for you to be patient, humble, and accepting. Um, but that means that every situation that tests your patience, if you're patient in that situation, it improves your relationship with Saturn. Every time someone hurts your ego a little bit, and you don't, and you realize that it's just your ego being hurt, that is also improve your relationship with Saturn. Whenever you accept situations that are difficult to accept, but you have no choice to accept them, that also improve your relationship with Saturn. So it's really about the spiritual change and growth manifesting, having a good relationship with Saturn or improving relationship with Saturn doesn't make events or fruits happen any quicker in your life. But what it does do is it makes you a more patient person. It makes you a more honest person. It makes you a more humble person. It makes you a more accepting person. So that when you do the hard work that you need, what Saturn is usually connected to, structure, discipline, organization, focus, direction, hard work, and all of these things, when you accomplish those things, Saturn is a planet that delays, but it does not deny. And it will reward you with all of the fruits which you are seeking. But it will not reward you with them quickly. And it will not reward you with them unless you are patient, humble, honest, and accepting. And so it's really wants you to spiritually change and grow so that you can deserve material benefits. Because a lot of times in this life, people have material success, but they don't appreciate the material success because they don't have the virtue. But if you have the virtue and material success, not only is the material success more likely to stay, but you are able to use that money to do service, to do humanitarian things, to do positive things for our community. So people with exalted Saturns like my guru, Amaji, exalted Saturn Ascendant, we know she does so much good community uh, uh, work for this community and work for this world. So when you look at Saturn, you look at people's virtue, you look at spirituals, uh, the, the growth, the patience, the humility,
but you also look at all of the adversities that they must uh, overcome, all of the timelines that they must be set back, all the hurdles that they must jump over. But the main remedy with Saturn is, is Saturn is kind of like when you jump on a horse for the first time. And when you jump on a horse for the first time, the horse will buck you off of the horse and you have a full heart and you fall off the horse and you hurt yourself a little bit. If you have a good relationship with Saturn, you will get back on that horse and you will ride it again and you will ride it better the second time. But people with very difficult Saturns, they get a lot of grief from falling off of the horse, from the difficult circumstances and situations in their life. And sometimes they are afraid to get back on that horse. The people with the well-positioned Saturn, they keep getting back on that horse until they are professional horse riders. So there is this direction where, okay, there are going to be adversities, challenges in your life that are gonna test your patience. They're gonna test your humility. They're gonna test your acceptance. But your ability to overcome them, to accept God's will and God's timeline versus your will and your timeline, that is the ultimate uh, improvement of the relationship with Saturn and I think has a lot to do with the karma and the lessons of the Saturn Mahadasha. Anything you would like to expand on the Saturn Mahadasha, Dr. Dharmesh? Yes, surely. You're a completely entirely given a lot to the Saturn Dasa, but uh, see, the, when, the, when the Saturn Dasa start, it start when the Jupiter Rahu ends. Now, Jupiter Rahu is a time where the people start losing the things. They are not able to get the things. So what happened that the, why the Saturn Dasa start as, uh, showing the sacrifice? Because the previous Dasha, what is uh, going to uh, pass by the person, is the Dasha where he has lose many things. So first thing is that uh, being it starting from the Jupiter Rahu, it, the Saturn rule start. The Saturn says initially in the Dasha, you have to sacrifice something. If you start sacrificing something, then only you will be able to get the guarantee of the Saturn Dasha that it will pass in the good period. As you mentioned that Saturn is delay but sure. I always say it's a delay but sure. Now, why people care about the Saturn Dasa? Because they have not performed. If you have performed, if you have done the deeds, then why to worry? Because Saturn is a judge. He will judge whatever the deeds you have done in the earlier Dasha and how now you have to face this Dasha. Even though it is in the Janma Dasa, if somebody is born in the Saturn Dasa, he will start making the principle of his life in the initial stage. See, many people have a very hardcore relation, uh, hardcore principle from their birth. I will do this, I will not do this. So that thing will happen in the Saturn Dasa. So it is very important that uh, in Saturn Dasa, you have to sacrifice, compromise anything. If you don't sacrifice or uh, uh, lose anything in the initial stage, uh, then you will be facing many problems in the entire part of the Saturn Dasa. So I always uh, advise my clients who are about to start the Saturn Dasa, I say, leave something, sacrifice something, which you like most, sacrifice it. So that if it is being taken by the time, or if it is taken by the Saturn, you will not feel hard. Sometimes people lose their parents, sometimes they lose their uh, highly uh, uh, material things, which have, they, uh, they have too much attachment this. Whether a person, whether a things, they lose their things and they're very surprised that how it will be bad. So this is a Saturn Dasa, which is an initial stage. It is very important for everybody that in Saturn, 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 six months span, you will get Saturn, Saturn and Saturn. This is a time to revise and re-raise your things. If you start losing something, compromising something, sacrifice something, in the initial stage of Saturn, then Saturn will not give you any problem. Saturn always gives the efforts based result. I say that it never gives the need base, but it gives a necessity base. So whatever your necessity is there, food, clothes, house, living area, this he will survive. This he will not touch. He will touch the extra things which you have covered for your comfort. Whatever you made your comfort, 
that will be taken away by the saturn because he know that it is not required for you so just leave it same thing happens in the sade sati that they lose so many relation they lose so many person they lose their job why because this was not a right place for them so when the saturn does start just very uh, carefully you start sacrificing something you start doing something extra if you are paid for the 100 do the 150 work so that what happens that if you work more then he has to give the reason so this is the main certain reason that under certain desire if you want to take a guarantee like we take a insurance for our life we know that uh, our life is so much year or whatever year we still take a insurance for this this insurance is also a certain where you give some portion to the insurance people so to secure your life the eighth house again is a insurance and that is also certain so certain is something which is bound to give result if you perform something if you compromise something if you sacrifice something then you don't have to worry about the saturn there's a very good book written by shani shaman by the amritula trivedi i mentioned in my saturn video also the best book where he has mentioned that saturn and by reading that book you will come to know that saturn is not your enemy your ego is your enemy you are not letting anything is your enemy and saturn will start breaking that ego start breaking this it will not be uh, going to be a worse in your life and once the saturn the size pass i know i am not so lucky to have my saturn the sign my life but uh, i'll pray to the god you can also pray to the god that i'll at least get the saturn the sign my life it's a dasha where you realize your efforts and you'll realize the result and your capability if you are not lucky to the saturn mahadasha just enjoy the same result in the saturn antardasha and every saturn antardasha gives a very good result uh and you Dr. perform jarmesh what was the title of the book that you mentioned this is mrudula trivedi okay mrudula so trivedi was, shani shaman someone asked yeah. um um how do you spell uh mrudula m r u d l a Mridula Trivedi. Okay, thank you. Um, I will share that with everyone so that they will be able to get that book. Um, now, I love what you explain and how you use the word sacrifice because a lot of times I use the word karmic debt, and I think we can use this word sacrifice and karmic debt when you make a sacrifice, when you make a compromise. you are paying off some of your karmic debt so there is a lot of similarity between that i also wanted to mention um another point which is whenever someone enters their saturn mahadasha they are kind of forced to go from one uh period of their life to another period of their life for example yeah. i was 13 or 12 years old when i went into my saturn mahadasha then my parents get immediately divorced and i have to become more like an adult much more responsible because my parents are no longer being parents so there is this energy if you are middle age you will enter the older age if you are the older age you will enter the wiser age it is all about what age you are in when you enter your saturn mahadasha If you are in an age of financial accumulation and making money when you, throughout your Saturn Mahadasha then the following dasha might have to represent for you kind of getting away from the material world and getting closer to the spiritual world as you transit into the Jupiter dasha. So that's just something I wanted to mention. I would like to give a special thanks to Sunili Jani Power Sam Sadasiva Jeppy, Dr. Dharma Shmeta, and all of the wonderful panelists that have joined us for the 2020 uh, Mahadasha Summit. We have many more exciting Dasha uh, summits to come, and we will be planning those and promoting those in the future with Dr. Dharma Sh and many other wonderful, exciting colleagues. And we just want to wish you an ultimate blessings. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Everyone stay safe and stay healthy.
Adiós. Adiós.